JB, thanks for being on the Sports Editor. It's good to chat to you all the way from the USNA, a very exciting place. And I think your career is, is set for great things and exciting times as well. Um, so thanks so much, man. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to be on you. It's good to be in touch with you and it's good to be in touch with some people from back home. Yeah. You know, always nice to talk to the people back there and hear their thoughts and get, get their sides of everything. Yeah, that's good stuff. JP, we're going to start off with, with your under-19 career and with the Blue Bulls. Um, and it seemed like you had a really good start to almost like your professional career with the Blue Bulls. You know, you were scoring tries left, right and centre. Was it, was it the start you were looking for um, at that level? Um, looking back now, I definitely think so. Um, obviously, but when I was 19 years old, I, I wasn't pleased with not being in the in the Vodacom Cup team at that stage or in the Super Rugby team because, I mean, we had people in our, in our group that had played Super Rugby and, and Vodacom Cup and all of that. So back then it was frustrating because you see all of these guys go and play, on, you know, in the, in the top teams. And, mm. and then, you know, for us, it was really difficult being in the under-19 setup. But looking back now, I mean, it, it's... It was a dream start to my professional career. You know, we played, we played the whole Curry Cup season. We went unbeaten. We en ended up winning the the under nineteen Curry Cup final. So, yeah, I think for me it was it was it was, it was probably the best start to a to a professional you know year that you, you that you can get. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I played a lot of I played a lot of fly off that year because um, the, the flyers we had were was Andre Pollard and he was playing Super Rugby and you know then we had. Kubis Mare that was playing under 21s and and Josh, my my teammate from school, he was injured all year, so I had to back up in fly off and then. Sure. But I mean, it is it is just such a great year. We had such such good guys playing in our team, and you know everything was just so competitive. It was it was great to be in that environment. Yeah, because as much as you enjoyed it, and like you said, it must have been frustrating for you because not so long after that you got a call up to the SA under 20 side, and, and there you are playing in a, a star studded team. It's just fantastic. Um, yeah, well, it, it, uh, a great experience, but in the same breath, like you're saying, frustrating. So I hear what you're saying, and you can play a fly off. But again, <laughs> you must have made the most of the opportunity and enjoyed playing for SA under 20. Oh, I mean, I, I loved it. You know, after after the under 19 year, um, obviously going into under 20s, we go into the under 21 setup, and you know, the next thing you know, I'm playing for the for the for the junior spring box and I, I it was it was just it all happened in like it all happened in such a such mm. a quick flash it was you know it was I got to the bulls played down a 19 year the, the preseason for the for the kite cup was long I, i'll admit that that was one of the toughest things that we had to do um but once the ball got rolling it was just you know things just started flying and it's just at, at a high pace and, and I think, you know, you, you just got to keep up with it. So, I mean, mm. but great years. I, I absolutely loved my time there. Yeah. And, you know, like you touched that you can play in nine and 10. Was that something that you did throughout your school career? Or was it just sort of more of a recent thing where you just say, hey, let me try to give Fly off a bit of a go here? Yeah. Um, through, my school year, through my school years, I never played, I never played any, any fly off. Um, I think we had because we had we had Josh we had Josh Thunder, my, my my teammate from school and he I mean he, he always played he was the you know he was the top dog in our team he was the top dog in the Eastern Cape so you know I never I never dare suggested to play fly off um, <laughs> but then yeah then the situation came and and we we were going into the into the Curry Cup and all of a sudden there's no fly offs available for the under 19 so. The, the next thing the next thing I know is the backline coach calls me up and says, do you want to have a go at fly-off? And I said to him, well, I mean, I've never played fly-off before. I come from Queen's College. We play running rugby, so don't expect me to kick anything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and, and I mean, it, it worked for us. We played, we had a good team. We had, we had some, you know, I think the biggest thing for me was that we had, I had good players outside of me and I had good players, you know, inside of me. I had... <laughs> I mean, we had a we had a we had a really star-studded team in the under-19 years, so it just made it so much easier for me. I, I didn't even have to do anything, you know. <laughs> just possible, easy as that. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Because if one thing that stands out for me is you're definitely consistent, and um, because you then we look going to the, the Blue Bulls under-21 again, scoring lots of tries. Um, and would you be happy to be classified as like a, a typical sniper? Because you just scored tries. I mean, you probably, if not the highest runs, a try scorer in your, your team, like a typical sniper. Yeah, well, 
I think I, I think going through the stages that the Bulls obviously in, in that era when I when I was there, it, a lot of the a lot of the game plan was focused around kicking, so okay. not a lot of sniping going on, and and obviously you, you get the pressure of you know being in a professional in, environment, so. There's, if you make a mistake, you, you get held accountable for it. So mm. I think there was a lot of fear back then, for, especially for me, because, you know, I, 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 came from, I came from a small school in a small town in the Eastern Cape. You go into a professional setup like this. You have guys from Office. You have guys from yeah. Grey Bloom. You have guys yeah. from Waterkloof. You know, it's, it's a bit of a... It's a, bit of a, 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 a you feel intimidated, so you don't really want to make any mistakes. You don't really want to do anything like that. So I think... I, I think going through going through those stages of the of the of the Bulls, where the era was typically based around kicking, I think uh, a lot of people would would recognise me as a as a kicking nine and a more you know conservative nine. Um, but but once I once I realised that you know you've got to do what you do best and you've got to do, play your own style, and I think I I got over that that stage of fear, and you know I. I made I made I made peace peace with making mistakes. So, mm. you know, I started sniping a lot more. I started enjoying my rugby again, and you know, it, it's just the the terms of like there's no pressure on you anymore. You know, you do what you do. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You, you just need to back it up. You know. Mm. No, true, very very true. And that obviously led to some success for you because you did well. But then you moved there from the, the Blue Bulls to the the Cheetahs. Um, quite an interesting time. Uh, do you feel there was enough? Uh, growth for you there? Did you did you get enough experience in your time there? Uh, growth wise, I think I grew a lot as a rugby player. Not only as a rugby player, but also as a person. I think there were some very difficult challenges at the Cheetahs. Um, my, my perspective going leaving the Bulls and going to the Cheetahs was sort of it was sort of like a, a weird situation where you know at the Bulls. For me, going into a, a, a senior team, you had Franco Hoogaard, Rudy Page, Pete Van Sale, all three Springboks, you know. And I, I was looking at it and I thought, you know, what are the chances of me going up there and, and actually getting getting some game time, you know? So I decided to move to the to the Cheetahs, and they, they only had they only had one senior contracted player um, at nine at that stage. And when I signed, so I signed. I thought, you know. It's going to be good because I'll, I'll get some exposure. I'll, I'll get some playing time, which was the most important thing for me is just to get game time. And then there were some unfortunate events that happened with the Kings where they didn't pay their players and, you know, some people got out of their contract. So, so um, Sean Fenter actually got released out of his uh, Kings contract and he also signed at the Kings then. I mean, at the at the Cheetahs. So there was there was there was obviously Sean Fenter, Tian Mayer. So it was a bit of a bad spot to me because Sean Fenter was really just he was just you know very good at that stage. He was, he was playing really good rugby, and you know he was a very good mate of mine, and I, I learned a lot from him. You know, he always drove excellence, always drove success. So yeah, I, I think I think it was a bit of a, a weird situation for me because I didn't expect. I didn't get what I expected. I didn't play, you know, any Super Rugby. I played a little bit of Pro 14. That's about it. But I mean, you know, just just going there, having new challenges. I think, I think all those challenges just, you know, it made me grow a little bit as a player and definitely as as a person too. There, so there were some really tough times at the Cheetahs where, mm. you know, I I I was just sick of, you know, not being able to play. Yeah not being able to, you know, achieve what I wanted to achieve. And, you know, going through those times, looking back, I always have this conversation with people and it was a really tough time for me, you know, because I expected to play and I expected to do all of this and then you get there and, and it doesn't happen. And, mm. uh, you know, it, it, was, it was quite tough for me. I, I At a stage, I phoned my agent and I, I told him, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I think I'm going to hang up the boots. I'll go work for my dad or whatever the case is. And, my agent said to me, "You have one year left on your contract, so you know just just see it out, and then we can talk after that." And then I, I played another year at the Cheetahs, and then after that, I I got the opportunity to come to Seattle. So mm. you know, I, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Before we before we touch on on, on America, just to ask you one or two more things about the time in South Africa, um, and and the Pro 14. I think it's a fantastic competition. I just I, I really really enjoyed. It. Um, did you enjoy playing in those color conditions? And that, that, that also maybe make things a bit more difficult for you than what you normally used to here in South Africa. Yeah, look, I, I think I only, only, only went on tour once, so mm. it wasn't, uh, you know, I, I didn't get to play 
as many times as I wanted to, but I went on tour once and the, the, the conditions is obviously a lot different to South Africa. You know, it's, it's not, it's not, um, it's not the sunny, the sunny 3 p.m. afternoon, you know, running rugby that you get here in South mm-hmm. Africa. Um, but I, I think we, we trained for it. We, do we, you know, we prepared for it. I think, you know, all, all of, all of those things play a factor and we, we, it, Although it, although it's although it's different to South Africa, it's the same weather for both teams on the field. So yeah. you know, it, it's just a matter of adapting and adjusting and getting on with it. You know, and yeah, <laughs> that's excellent. And now you're in the US and A, fantastic country. Um, how good is the fishing? Well, the fish the fishing's quite good. Um, good. So I, I actually enjoy it. We we we, we hit a bit of a roadblock with the COVID. Uh, mm. They didn't allow any any fishing, so I mean that that was a bit of a roadblock because uh, there's a, a salmon run that comes through to through Seattle in the in I think it's mid like starting May you know July June yeah. not about there. Yeah. So we kind of missed that with all the with all the the, the lockdown activity. So I really couldn't get into that much. But I mean yeah. I, I go out there a lot and I just I just try and catch anything, you know, there's lots of trout, there's lots of bass, obviously, so yeah, yeah. some good spots. And, and uh, is the red meat any good? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's, it's different, it's way different <laughs> to South Africa. Yeah. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit more, it's a bit more rich than South African meat. It's, okay. it's got a bit of, yeah, it's got a bit more fat in it, it's, the, the marbling is quite good. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just not your proper, you know, felt beef cow that's got that <laughs> you know, that extra little little special taste to it yeah well whatever you're eating it it's obviously working because yeah, you did very very well i think you scored six tries in 18 matches in i think it was your first season so again yeah. you know you, your conversion rate is, is very very high um is that due to sort of like an an open game um in in terms of your team's attack or was it just pure accuracy you guys Focus on what you want to do, and you you get it done. Yeah, I th- I think I think a lot of it is sort of like the game plan that we play. Um, you know, we we play a very expansive game plan. It's it's a it's a it's, a, it's nice running rugby. You know, quick quick quick, uh, quick ball speed. Um, the pace of the game is quick, uh, but but then again, like you said, it's there's a lot of accuracy that goes into it. Like if you if you want to if you want to be able to achieve this, there needs to be a lot of you know accuracy going into every every aspect of the game. So I think a, a lot of it a lot of it you know helps me because all of the guys over here are really you know they're focused and they and they and they're quite determined and you know they they put in the they put in the work. So I think. That helps me a lot. Um, obviously, I, I wouldn't be able to achieve this without any other players. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think the the game plan is nice and expansive. I'm enjoying it. I'm confident. It's you know the, they they're giving you lots of freedom to expose yourself, and I think that's what that's what makes rugby. You know, that's that's when you start enjoying your rugby. Mm. It's when 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 you get some freedom and you start playing and. You, know, you can experiment, and you know you can you can have a free for all, not a free for all, basically, but you can have fun. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, would it be fair to say that you feel a lot more settled at the Sea Wolves? Um, I think the, the 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 first year that I arrived here last year, obviously, was was a bit tough because they had a they, they had another nine playing that was playing for Canada. Um, and they sort of banked on him as the as the main nine, and I had to obviously come in and work through through the ranks, and you know I had to prove myself, which I did um, after the first six games, and then you know I, I think I think at that stage I it, it was it was good for me because I I constantly had to drive myself and work mm-hmm. hard, and you know there was always there was always the you know. I, I always had to prove myself. I always had, you know. I think for me, a, a big thing about my my success is that I'm I'm very I'm very competitive. I don't like losing in any 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 mm. any form ever. Uh, whether it's playing cards before game, you know, whether it's <laughs> anything like that, <laughs> I don't like losing. So I think that that was a that's a big thing for me. Um, but yeah, I think I, I am I am comfortable at the moment. I think. I'm not comfortable enough to know that you know I'm 
I'm I'm getting complacent, but I, I do think that I, I found a I found a place where I'm I'm able to express myself and I'm express myself, you know, I can express myself freely. I can enjoy my rugby, which is mm. which is the biggest the biggest thing for me is just to enjoy my rugby and, and this is the place where I can enjoy my rugby. Uh, that's excellent. And um have you been able to play a bit with, with Ricky Ricket, work with him, um you play with him, you know, eight nine combination. Is any of that happening, or is he a bit grumpy at times? <laughs> uh, well, I must say he quite fancies himself on the kicking tee. <laughs> uh, we, you always have that one forward that fancies yeah. himself on the kicking tee. Um, but yeah, me and him have a good. We have a good relationship. Yeah. Um, obviously, I played with him at the Bulls when he was when he was there in under nineteen and under twenty. So, you know, I know him very well, and I know he's. I know his style of play very well. He's a he's a tough he's a tough character to yeah. you know to play against. I can tell you that he's he's very tough. He, he's hard. He runs hard. He do, does everything at hundred percent. And I and I I respect that. I enjoy that because that you know it makes makes all the other players feed off that. You know when a, a guy keeps going hundred percent all the time, you know that, that's a side of that's a you know that's the form of of success that you'll get is when people keep driving mm. this, the high standards, mm. the high energy levels. Yeah, so I, I, I enjoy playing with him. Um, I've had some good times with him, some fun times. Uh, he's, we've had some some very, very on and off conversations on the field, you know, <laughs> where it gets in the heat of the moment and all of that. But, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, that's just, uh, I think that's what makes the sport fun. Is that it's yeah. always testing you. It's always yeah. testing you. It, it's so interesting talking about, but, you know, beginning a bit tense there. Um, you know, you guys are obviously rugby means a lot to you, you know, and you, we brought up with it's it's in our culture, it's it's what we know. Is it sort of the same there in America, or do that do they get as intense as you guys? I'm not trying to be disrespectful to them at all, but I know you guys would be like rugby. We're here for rugby. Do they have the same sort of passion and, and drive for the game, or was that building more and more? I th- I think so. So so you know South Africans from. Like any any South African, you know, it's if if you can't get something right, you you find a way to get it right. Mm. You you know, you get you go you do anything out of your way to to get something right. You know, yeah. I think I think the I think that American people also have the same drive, the same they've got the same or the same they've got the same drive for it. They've got the same drive for success, but I think their approach is different. I think okay. there's a lot of I think there's a lot of like different approaches and, and not everyone is the same because you'll get different approaches in South Africa towards success too. You yeah. know, like yeah. some people are calm, some people, some people, you know, that's just their personalities, you know? And I think, I think the, the, how can I say, I think the, the average American player over here has, has a much more calmer, you know, more technical approach towards right, everything, right. Um, okay. w- which is sometimes good too, because it balances out the rest of the team. You know, there's people mm. that just want to get, put their head down and go and go and go and, you know, find a way to win. And then there's people that actually calm down and they say, listen, you know, look at the technical side to this, look at mm. this. And I, I, I think that's good. I think there's a, there's obviously a very high standard. Um, there's very high standards. There's very high com- competitiveness, which I like. And, you know, I think that's what, that's what makes it. That's what. That's what makes it a bit different to 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 the South African rugby player. I think American American rugby players have a different approach towards it, which yeah. I don't say is wrong, and I don't say South African approach is wrong. Everyone yeah. has a, a different approach. You know, it's just find out what works for you. Yeah, it's interesting because I think in time rugby is going to get a lot more momentum there, and probably be. Um, well, American football's got a lot more money invested. It's going to be a serious threat to that. And as soon as that happens, I think America's going to be A for away in terms of their, their recruitment and their rugby program. Everything will just, just fly, literally. That's, yeah. that's how I see it. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's an interesting because do you, do you like to bring like sort of an, an energy to the team? And um, are there other guys that sort of bring the same sort of vibe? You know, like at Hears, um, yeah. that they bring towards it. Is, is it also there as well? Uh, I think I play a big. I play a very big role in that. Um, obviously, like being in being in a, a high performance environment, you know, for what seven years now. Um, 
I think that sort of brings a little bit of calmness to it too. You know, when things don't go your way, you've, you've got to you've got to realize that you know you got to stick together as a team. You got to stay on track. You got to stay motivated. You know, and I think I think I play a very big part in that because a lot of the people over here haven't been professional rugby players for seven years. You know, so yeah, um, a lot of them are only starting out now. A lot a lot a lot of them have have, have been professional rugby players elsewhere. So you know, it's I think. I think just having that, uh, not a lot of experience, but having a little bit of experience, I, I think counts in my favour. Um, mm. And I think, yeah, just, you know, like you say, when, when, when things are going bad, you know, I mean, th- this, this 2020 season, we started off a bit shaky. We, we, I think we lost, we lost three out of five games in the okay. first five games. And, you know, it gets tough. People, people start getting aggravated with each other. People start getting irritated with each other. You know, it's a, it's a team environment. Everyone wants to win, you know. And I think that's where the, you know, the calmness, just stay calm, keep, motivi- keep motivated, keep working hard, you know, just keep working towards your, your, your own goals and, 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 and the team goals and, you know, less worrying about other teams, more worrying about our team, you know, just... You know, doing those little things, I think, just uh, brings a, a, a little bit of security for, for the other players. And, you know, obviously, you have to be an example if you, if you, if you have, you know, this more experience than other players. You know, Absolutely. be an example, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I, th- I, I think, I think that, that helped us a little bit this year too. No, definitely. And I think there's, as much as you say you are experienced, which, which you are, I still think there's a lot more value you're going to add to the team as, as you get more involved there as well. So it's brilliant to see. And, and talking about sort of like experienced players, um, did, you, did you have anyone that you sort of try, try to mould your game after? Um, I'm trying to think of an example, but he might be a bit too young, maybe like even like a Ruan Pina. I mean, he's been around for, for quite a while now. You know, did you have anyone that you sort of moulded your game after or you just did your thing? Mm, I, I, think, I think when I was younger, I definitely... I definitely you know, I obviously wanted to be a, be like Uist. Um I think all the scrum offs at that stage wanted to be like Uist. I think a lot of the a lot of the people, obviously, you know, because of my height and my I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a bit taller than than the average scrum off. So a lot of the people, you know, always asked me about if I like Uist and if I and I did. And then I think when I started my professional career, I, I sort of I sort of move towards the the Fury de Pria era I think Fury de Pria was a was a brilliant player you know mm. he wasn't he wasn't he, he wasn't big but he wasn't small either but he, I think just the the the, the mastermind that he was he was yes. a clever player yeah. you know he was his distribution was on point he, you know he he did he, he did everything that he that he was acquired to do he did 100% right um but yeah I think he was he was just a very very clever scrum off yeah um and I you know, I, I worked with him a lot when I was at the Bulls. He came and helped in, in a lot of the sessions over there. Um, so yeah, I, I think I, I think that's definitely someone that that I yeah, that I, yeah. So how tall are you then? So I'm one point eight seven meters. Yeah, you was pretty big for us come over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say big. I, 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 well, be tall, I wouldn't right? say bigger. I'd say tall. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, good man. So, um, are you guys doing any training at the moment? And is there any talk of when the season is going to carry on, or what's the plan? How are you guys handling everything? So, at, at the moment, our training is sort of like in in in, in groups. The season's obviously off now, so we we're doing off season. We only start up in the, in December again. Um, our season only runs from December to end of July, uh, June. So. Other than that, you know, people people go back home. They go play domestic rugby somewhere else, back in Australia, back in New Zealand. Um, so for now, for the people that aren't doing anything, we are just trying to stay fit. You know, trying to trying to trying to be in the gym. It's obviously difficult because not many gyms are open. So mm-hmm. you know, it's it's difficult to to stay in shape and get in there. But I mean, just just running, and we, we've got we've got programs that we need to follow. So you know, and it's not hectic programs either. It's just your your basic, you know. Staying fit, staying in shape. It's not, not nothing hectic. Um, I do think the programs will obviously change closer to the time. I think we'll, you, you know we'll get more intense, more more physical. You know, into the building phase again. But for now, it's it's yeah. For now, it's difficult because there's not really much you can do 
and so, you know most of the gyms are still closed you know Ooh. if you want to in, in in some areas this you can't even go outside anymore or you still can't go outside without a mask so it's difficult to run with a mask on or do, or do yeah. a bronco test oh, with yeah. a mask on it's Ooh. difficult enough doing it without one so yeah i don't know how anyone thought that that's going to be beneficial i mean honestly it's yeah. it's so difficult no, your, no. your lungs burn man it's it's, it's yeah. horrible that's crazy man <laughs> Do you have an ambition to um, play international rugby again, even consider the, the Eagles? Um, the, would you, would you um, do that? Yeah, I, I mean, for now, I'm, I'm focused on, you know, for playing for the Sea Wolves. Um, I think if the opportunity definitely came up, I would, I would definitely consider it. It'll be a, a very, very good opportunity for me. For now, I'm focused on the Sea Wolves and and winning championships for the Sea Wolves and j- just being the best player for the Sea Wolves. But um, yeah, I think definitely the the Eagles in in the long long term perspective. I know they did change the law this year, so they extended the law for I think it's I think for 2021 or it's for the three year period. So you only have to be in the country for three years. I think it is. I'm not I'm not too sure. I, I, yeah, I, I haven't really you know I haven't really. Okay. Showed any interest in it? For for now, I think my my only my only focus is the Sea Wolves and winning championships for the Sea Wolves. No, that's cool. So just give me a bit more of an understanding of how the the league actually works, because America, you know, is a small little dot on the map, a tiny little country. <laughs> so you are obviously in Seattle. How does the yeah. league work? Is there a North League, a South League, and then you know, do the winners play winners? How does it work? Yeah, so we've got, so I need to get this right because I don't actually know either. Um, so there's, so there, so, so we've got a Western conference, which is wow. obviously on the Western side of America. And then there's an Eastern conference and um, you play. So, so you play everyone in your conference, you play them twice and then you play everyone in the other conference once. So whether it be home or away, um, obviously there's, there's major factors that play part in this because on the East coast in January, February, March, it's all snowed up. You know, you've got Toronto, which is in Canada, which is all snowed up. So there, there can't be any rugby being be be played there. You've got Boston, which is also, you know, it's 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 uh, until until I think March or, or or May, I think everything is you know covered in snow. So um, there's obviously that factors that, that that play part, and obviously the 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 the, the time zones is different time zones. You know, from from Seattle, from Seattle to, to New York, it's a seven-hour flight, you know. So it's from basically from from Johannesburg to the UK to play in the Pro 14. Um, but yeah, so there, there's a, there, there are a lot of factors that obviously play part. Um, the conference is split up, and then and then uh, you'll I think you'll you'll play every everyone in the in the other conference once, and your own conference twice, mm. and then from there I think it's just the top the top. Two seats from each conference, or top three seats from the quarterfinals and semifinals. I think I'm, I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, but I mean that that's that's a lot of travelling, and that actually adds to quite a long season. My goodness me! Um, and it just give us a rough idea. Is it a normal sort of? I guess it has to be a normal South squad of 23 players or whatever it may be. So you guys have got yes. to be fit. Eh? My word. Yes. So, so, so one thing for us is that we don't have, we don't really have teams feeding into us. So we don't have an under twenty one team, we don't have an under nineteen team. You know, we don't have a, a Vodacom Cup team or a Super Sport Challenge team. So it's difficult for us. We've got a squad of about 30, 35 players, and that's a squad that you need to work with. You know, and um, a lot of the a lot of the players do end up like the players that, that that don't get enough game time. They do end up going to play a little bit of club rugby, which is good because it keeps them fit. Um, but but the squads are generally you know thirty to thirty five, and I must I must admit it's difficult you know we, it's I think this this year we had fifteen teams in the in the we had fifteen or sixteen teams in the in the yeah. league so you know it's 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 and traveling in and out you know traveling to New York coming back for a weekend it, it takes a bit of it takes a bit of of toll yeah. on you you know you've got you, you you're traveling down to atlanta you're traveling down to new orleans you know those are all flights that are five hours six hours seven hours flights you know mm. so doing that every weekend takes a bit of a toll um and then obviously uh, i think a, a, another big thing for us is we've only got one or two bye weeks which um 
which is a bit tough too. So the body body doesn't get that much rest. But yeah. you know, there's I, I always see I always see the positive things in it. We've got we've only got six months of the year that you play rugby. The other six months you have enough more than enough, more than enough time to rest. You know, <laughs> and 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 get your body into shape for the next yeah. season, which is obviously very important. Excellent, JP. It sounds like you, you're on a, a good track there and you're enjoying it and you seem to sound like you're enjoying life as well, which is very, very important. And as you sort of draw to an end, uh, um, I hope you're making enough time to actually have a brow once in a while. Oh, yeah, definitely. We've, we actually, <laughs> we actually uh, it, it, down in Seattle, I, I'm, not, I'm not in Seattle, Seattle currently. I'm on a farm. I'm okay. doing some workout on a farm in Pennsylvania. But in Seattle, we've got a few spots where we can go to where there's some actual brys and you can actually, wow. you can actually get some firewood going. You know, it's not a gas bry. It's not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my, dad always used to, <laughs> my dad always used to say that uh, um, in Afrikaans, he used, to, he used to have this phrase that he said, uh, a chas is someone you, you invite for a bry, not, <laughs> not, not that you bry with, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah, so we, we, I mean, we make the most of it. We got, especially now during lockdown, we we were down there about three times a week. Just you know, if we can, nice. if we can just find a find a spot to put a a burra or a steak on <laughs> on the coals, that's more than enough for us. You know, uh, that's excellent. Well, JP, um, it's been really good to chat to you. Thank you for talking about your career, and I can only see that your your career is going to be moving forward. I think quite quickly once the league is back up and running and I'm pretty sure it's going to be more than six tries and 18 games. It'll be like 18 tries and 18 games. You must keep going. It's, it's good to see. Mommy. Yeah, I, I really hope so. Yeah. And, and thank you. Thank you for the support and thank you for, you know, following up with me and I appreciate it. And, and I appreciate the, the, the wishes for the next season. Yeah. I hope it's going to do, I hope it's going to go well. You know? I, I, hope, I hope our team's going to do well. Um, it's it's just getting tougher and tougher. I'll tell you that it's, okay. it's not it's not just it's not just uh, the, the average teams you're playing against anymore. It's you know it's, there's there's some high caliber teams. There's some high caliber players, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, it's just okay. another challenge. They must produce some serious athletes. I mean, if you look like university students that come out of there and they're doing you know athletics for the country and running around, they must have some serious guys. And if you convert your rugby, you could really yeah something else to well, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you one thing. I've seen some some proper athletes in America, yeah. like you know, just and 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 these are just normal guys that come along and you know they 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 really good athletes. I mean, we've we've got a guy in our team that's about 32, 33 years old, and you know he he makes my body look like a you know, <laughs> look like a shame. So I mean, you know, there's some really good athletes in, in America, and I th- I think because there's such a big population in America, that you 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 obviously get. You know, more of those one percent people that are just abnormally yeah. like insane at everything they do. Yeah. Um, I think just 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 putting the the rugby knowledge into that into that mind and in, onto that body, I think you can create some some proper rugby players over here. No, that's true. That's true. Well, you are not JP. As, as long as they don't, don't do any damage to you, as long as it's going to yep. be. <laughs> <laughs> You're a tough guy. You can handle this. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to differ sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> oh, JP, no, that's good stuff, man. And you know what would be nice is that um, it would be nice if a game or two could be televised because uh, I don't know if they show anything on ESPN or is rugby. Yeah, yeah we, we've we, we've we've got deals on ESPN. We so we, okay. we obviously in America only the TV rights are the TV rights in America are, are very very strong. You know this. Okay can only be broadcasted on ESPN. It can only be broadcasted on, I think we've got, we've got ESPN, CBS Sports, and then we've got another, another broadcasting company too. And then obviously the, for the international viewers, it's all on, on a Facebook live page, um, okay. which is, it's not that convenient, but you know, it, it still, it still does the, does the job. My family can watch, my friends can watch and all of that. Yes. But I, I think in, in the coming years, it's just going to keep growing. And I think obviously, yeah. When it does grow, there will be more interest in it. And then, you know, that, that's how the league will just prosper. Absolutely. No, and like a JP, that's good to hear, man. It's really good to hear. And yeah, like I said, we'll, I can't wait to see you running around and doing your thing and putting record in this place. No, I'm joking. Don't do that. <laughs> I try my best every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, first class, JP, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it, man.
It's good to chat yeah, to you. No, th- thank you very much. Yeah, it was really good to chat to you too. I, I mean, yeah. like I said, I, I appreciate the support and I always, I always appreciate the support from back home. You know, it's good to chat to someone from back home and it's good to get some, some feedback from, from the people back home and talk to them about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's how we're going to grow the sport in America. Yes. And that's, yeah. for me, that's the, you know, that's the biggest goal. Yeah, it's excellent. That's brilliant. <laughs> Thanks so much, JP.